Father, and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. So, I would invite you to sing along if you can. If my people will humbly pray, seek my face and turn away from all their wicked ways, then I will hear them and move my hand. Freely then will I forgive and I you speak to God, when you speak to God, do you want healing? Do you want grace? Hope? Vision? Love? I would ask you to consider what you were asking for this morning. Can I need some water? What are you asking for? I was sitting in a cafe in North Carolina. I was on a journey. I sat down in a booth like most of you of any restaurant that you're at. I'm sitting there and this couple was sitting there and they were having a heated conversation. I didn't want to hear what they were saying, but they wanted me to hear because they weren't quiet. Maybe you've been in those booths as well. Kind of uncomfortable going, I'm reading my menu. Anyway. I'm uh, just reading my menu. Anyway, she was a little upset with her husband. Ladies? Yeah? No? Okay, good. Not here in this setting, but other, other ladies outside of the church, they get a little upset with their husbands. Anyway, she was a little upset. And he went down this litany of, you know, when that guy cut me off, there was no police officer to pull him over. And when that guy ran that stop sign, there was no cop to pull him over. I kind of knew where this was going, <laughs> but I love what his wife said. She said, you know, you were doing a 9, 90 miles an hour in a 55. So you, you were just asking for it. Did you hear this as a kid? Mm -hmm. Maybe as an adult. You were asking for it. Was this usually when you were doing something good or usually doing something not so good? Don, what do you think? Good or not so good? So, uh, a number of times my mom would say, you were asking for it. And, uh, of course, a spanking ensued. So, what are you asking for? If we turn that on a dime and we take a look at how our behavior suggests what we ask for, What are you asking for today? Jesus begins our gospel reading by doing something that shows us what we should be doing. What does he do, folks? What is the first statement in the gospel reading? Look quickly, if you want to. He was praying. He sets the example first. An example of how you're supposed to live your life. Prayer. And when he's done, the disciples say, hey, teach us to pray. So him as a leader, the leader of this band of twelve, teaches them how they should pray and how to live their life. He not only tells them about prayer, but he tells them about what happens in prayer. I wasn't really praying to go to Lodge's Field. Lodge's Field is a it's a part of Portugal. It is a part of Portugal, but it's 700 miles out into the Atlantic Ocean. It is an archipelago, it is made from volcanic activity, much like Hawaii, but that's just as far as it goes. There's no tourism <laughs> in these islands, or not much at all. Anyway, I arrived, I was getting settled, I was invited by the leader of the wing to come and talk to him in his office. The leader of the organization, all the organizations. His name was Dirt Winston, his call sign was Dirt, 
D-I-R-T. So I thought that was an interesting call sign, and certainly I thought it was interesting that he asked for me to come to his office, that he knew chaplain. So I thought he was going to give me a law a thing like all the other leaders have. This is my expectation of chaplains. This is my expectation of you. Is there any questions? Pretty simple, right? That's what leaders do. This is my expectations of you. And these are my, you can have these expectations of me, that kind of stuff. So I walked in and he said, hey, John, I want to see you. I said, yes, sir, you know. And I sat down and he said, let me pray for you. I about fell out of my chair. Let me pray for you. How often have you in your life said that same thing to somebody who's come into your presence? Maybe someone you supervise, maybe a friend, maybe someone who supervises you, maybe <laughs> someone who doesn't like you. Doesn't that change the relationship a little? Let me pray for you. Now, Dirt is an interesting guy because we have a relationship to this day. I encouraged him after our relationship for a while to seek being a pastor. And he was kind of taken back by that. He said, I never thought of that. And I said, well, you know, I pray for you and I pray for your life. And I think that God is calling you to serve as a leader in the church. Not as a leader in the church. And believe it or not, he is now serving as a pastor in the Lutheran Church. Amazing what prayer can accomplish. Amazing what God can do in people's lives. Amazing what God can do in your life this day. Jesus says, hey, this is how we pray. Our Father. You know this song, and you know this prayer, and like the kids are like, I don't know. <laughs> Our Father. And then he goes down, and then he's, uh, he gets there. Once he's done, I think it's amazing. He says, but hang on a second. There's more to it. There's more to it. God is listening. Ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be, the door will be open to you. Wow. Kind of amazing, right? How many times have you knocked and Jesus didn't show up? How many times have you asked and not been given? Today I'm going to ask you, do something so radical it might say, you're going to get rid of me next Sunday. <laughs> so radical that you might say, I'm just not doing it. Okay. I would ask that you look to your right or left for somebody, and I'm going to give you a minute, and I would ask that you pray for the person next to you. Now, if there's a person there's three of you. Look for somebody else who doesn't have a prayer partner. So I would ask that you take someone's hand and pray for them now. If you are alone, just raise your hand and I'll come forward and, and I'll pray with you. Just reach over and pray with somebody. Just anybody. God, help her when she's at work. Help her to know that you love her. And help her as she's blessing her. Next door, that she can just share your love with him, that he will know that you are with him also as you are with her. So I would ask that you would help them. Now, if you're done, it's very fast, right? The other person who was prayed for, I asked that you pray for the person who prayed for you. So, pretty simple, right? Dear God, I ask that you bless Nina and John and welcome them to our community as we have here at St. Paul. To bless their children and grandchildren and everyone around them. And I hope they are happy and healthy and always well and happy. All right, all the praying done? 
All right, who prayed for the lottery? Who won the lottery? <laughs> who prayed for the big house on the lake? <laughs> who prayed for riches on gold? Who prayed for the new car? Probably none of you. Most of you, I believe, would have prayed that God would give people hope in the struggle, vision in their blindness, grace in how they spoke to each other, and maybe hope amidst the storm. I'm going to pick on Norma just a little bit. She said, uh, I don't know what to pray for when I took her. Well, Grace, comfort, vision, joy, that Christ would be a part of someone's life. The challenge I have for you is when you leave this place that you would go into the world and pray for someone else. And if they ask you, are you crazy? Say no, I, I just know Jesus. There was a, this is a story, and I hope it's true. Anyway, the gal was dressed in her full uniform. She was a Salvation Army person. If you've never seen them in their uniform, it's quite stunning. It's wonderful. Anyway, she was sitting on the corner, and she was handing out tracts, and she was talking to people about faith. And the three college guys were laughing about what she was doing and laughing about her uniform. And and kind of cutting up on her, on this gal. And one of them said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to make her feel silly. So he walked up and he said, sister, would you pray for me? He was surprised when she reached out and grabbed his arm. <laughs> All right. Grabbed his arm. And she said, oh, Lord. Make this man's heart as soft as his head. Dennis, it was okay? All right, good. Some people will say that you're soft in the head if you're a friend. Praying? Some people will say that you need a crutch. Pray anyway. Some will seek to diminish you as a person, as a Christian. Pray anyway. For you see, brothers and sisters, you didn't get what you were asking for when Jesus came. You didn't get what you were asking for. You got something so much. God loves you. And he sent his only son into this world to transform you. He didn't put it in the general. Oh, he to transform the world. No, he came to transform you. So that your life would be a celebration. That your life will find hope even in the darkest places. Find strength to meet every challenge. You didn't get what you asked for. You received Jesus. So keep knocking. Keep seeking. Keep asking. And every time the door opens, Jesus will be there with open arms, saying, I love you. All God's children. Amen. Amen.